I got out of work early. Good afternoon and welcome to Matt Becker Video. Mm, what you say? Mm, that you want me to Does it make sense for me to try and shovel now? I mean, it's still snowing, but I could potentially get it started. Please respond quickly. So yeah, I'm likely going to end up wasting this day. Like, this would be a good opportunity to do a lot of fun things on video, but I'm probably not going to think of anything too creative. What do you want from me? No one tells me what antics make them laugh, what make them cry. They're just like, keep it up, you know, and I'm just like, okay, I'll just keep doing this. <laughs> you like, are you enjoying this? Are you enjoying this? <laughs> Is this what you want? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. For dry, red eyes. Hi, I'm going to teach you how to paint a cube orange. I like to have a surface and a cube together. First, you first find your cube and make sure it's a clean cube. You don't want to work with a dirty cube. Always wear hand and eye protection. All right, that's good enough for government work. So now the secret to painting a good orange cube is to lather on as much orange as possible. Yeah. That's a that's a pretty good amount of orange. I think that'll be enough to start with. If you're, if you're working if you're working with wood, don't start with a brush. Use use a palette knife. And I found one of Derek's hairs. Just uh slather slather that orange on. I might have used too much orange. But yeah, that, that's an, a very embarrassing thing to say. Well, we're looking pretty covered here, and soon I'll, soon I'll have to flip this to the other side. This is an orange mess. All right, and you'll see that I've already prepared one orange cube. This is what it will end up looking like. So yeah, that, that's basically how you paint an orange cube. You know, not that I'm qualified, but we're going to pretend because I have a YouTube channel. But if I were to ever teach a class on music, there would only be one book requirement. The Mysticism of Sound and Music by Hazrat Inayat Khan. This guy, if anyone knows music, it's him. Like, I get that I'm a little bit of a new age hippie. But if you ever just read things that have truly blown your mind, once you have processed the information, there's nothing else you can do but try and come to terms with it. So I might be talking out my ass on a lot of these things, but if there's anyone who's not, it's this guy. I just want to understand why people think that they can decide how other people live. It's like, what can we do to get people to break out of these typical structures? I think this is the real power of art. If we're going to actually talk about art, art doesn't exist in a vacuum. Art is communication. You are trying to communicate something to someone else in a different way than is typically understood. The whole idea of art is to try and break you out of whatever it is that you're in. You know, we can only know so much, and so we have to rely on each other to get a more complete picture. So anything that I do, I'm just trying to open your world in whatever small way. You never know what little thing will just kind of be the final pebble on the pile and suddenly a collapse. <laughs>
This is not me. This is me. <laughs> this is not me. I've just been sitting here for... I don't know how long. Derek, I'm listening to this tape. It's really good. I have no idea what it is. This is freaking amazing. <laughs>